Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on my father-in-law's 1990 CRXSI. So recently he's been having some issues uh, with the clutch and this is kind of something we've foreseen happening. Uh, I knew this car was eventually gonna need a clutch. And I had even adjusted the cable. There's a cable on these cars because these cars are actually cable driven by the clutch. And you can adjust somewhat of the pedal catch and all that, but it seems that we are out of adjustments. And Also, don't forget you have one metal tube coming in from the valve cover, a breather hose that you have to also pull out of the intake before you can remove it. Obviously this battery tray has to go. There's a few bolts. There's one here. There's one here. There's one down here that you have to get with an extension. And there's one hiding here behind the harness. Also, you have to make sure that you take off the AC bracket here that's connected as well. Don't forget that there's little connections for the harness that are attached to the plates. You just gotta pop those out with a pick. Got the pan underneath and I just wanna show you that this is your drain plug. It is in the shape of a 3 8 drive on the ratchet. Gonna pop these wheel covers off real quick. Now just an FYI, the rims do have an indication on what side they go on. And if you're ever putting these back, you wanna make sure that the arrow points to the valve because sometimes when people snap these back on, these tabs here break on the side and then they never really stay on after that. So make sure this arrow here is always pointing to the valve and you'll, you'll never really have an issue. I'm gonna do the same thing for the passenger side. Up the other wall, very careful. Slowly fly around. There's an R here, which means right side. So just an indication to let you know which side the actual wheel should be on. Start by taking that axle nut out. Remember, don't forget to indent it out if there's a dent in it. There's a little pin you have to straighten out. Sometimes it's looped around the threads. That's gotta be removed before you can take this crown nut off. Sometimes you get lucky and they come out easy. Now we can loosen up 17. I actually don't take this nut completely off because we do have to bang on the side of the control arm to release the spindle so that way it can drop. So I don't, I don't like to take the nut completely off because if you hit the threads, you can damage the threads and then it's a pain in the, pain in the buttocks to get the crown nut back on. be able to just move the hub to the side. So now that the hub is off the lower bowl joint, the axle is, is pretty much out. We are basically gonna do the same thing to the passenger side. We're gonna take the, the, the axle spindle nut off. And we're gonna take the bottom crown nut off the lower bowl joint, leave it on, thre thread it a little bit, hit it with a hammer, separate it, pull the hub off, separate it from the axle, and that's it. You'll be done with both sides underneath the car and we're gonna pop out 
the axle from the tranny. Sorry if I missed that, but see how it popped out. So I took the passenger side off. I didn't record because it's basically the same exact process as the driver's side. After that is all said and done, I went underneath. I popped both axles out. No need to take off that fork. If you're not changing the axles, they can kind of just hang out here. So this fork can remain. So now that we're up top here, we got to take off this clutch cable. What you can do is, is you can wind this all the way back as if you're taking a bolt out or a nut. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna give this some, some extra room to disconnect from the shift lever. So once that's done, you can remove the cable. There is a 10 millimeter ground that goes to the chassis. That's very important to get when it, when it gets put back on. That has to come off. The starter over here, once you get past these AC lines, you can see down there, there's a 12 millimeter right here. And then the, the ground connection for the solenoid. This just pops off because it's an alligator clip. So we can take that off right now. So that's gonna disconnect the starter and then you have two bolts going into the transmission. There are two 14s. If you can see, one is right there, right there. And then one is underneath, you can't see it from here. So that, that takes care of the starter. And then once the starter's out, we're gonna work on taking this front mount out down there. And then there's only this rear mount. Once we get this mount out, there's a cable that runs down from your cluster, which is this cable right here. Once you get these three 17s out and the, I think, the 17 bolt to the mount itself, you'll be able to, I'll show you how to disconnect this uh, speedometer cable because this has to come out of the transmission before we can drop the actual tranny of the, uh, the bracket here. Pull this rubber up. You can go from the bottom as well and just pull it out. That might be the easiest way. I think that's how I did it. Yep, pull it out from the bottom, make sure it comes out on this side. Then you just lift up and pull it through and that's it. Don't forget to take off this ground right here. That has to come out. Okay guys, so we're gonna break that starter connection to the positive lead. I already disconnected the ground alligator clip. And I like to put all these, these nuts and bolts back in place if I can, just so they're secure, so I know where they are. Now we're gonna work on popping out the 14 millimeter bolts. Top bolt is out for the starter. I don't know if you guys can see my ratchet where it's at, but underneath underneath the starter, but it's, it's doable with an extension and a deep socket. So I broke that loose and now I'm gonna be able to pull the starter out. Just got the rest of that long bolt out out of the bottom for the starter so the bottom bolt is the longer bolt my advice to you guys if you're going to do this leave the top bolt in first so it holds the starter in place that way once you break the bottom bolt loose you can kind of get it with a, a long extension without the ratchet and just kind of unwind it out as opposing to taking the top one out first and then doing the bottom one it, you're going to have to use a ratchet all the way and the angle is just a little crazy so leave the top one in Take the bottom one out uh, first, and that way it'll be much easier. And then this thing will just, should just pop out. Maybe we'll just pull the starter right up. We're gonna have to go back underneath the car because before we take these mounts out, we have to disconnect the shift linkage and a few other little things underneath because it'll be a little bit of a hassle if we take this rear mount out in order to take the shift linkage off, we have to remove a pin out and it's you have to pop it out with a hammer and a little, uh, a little punch. So if this mount is out, it's gonna give a lot of play in the, in the transmission. So we'll never have any power pushing that pin out. So 
Let's leave the mounts in for now. We're good over here. We're just gonna take apart this reverse light connection, but all you have to do is pull those apart and you're pretty much done with the electrical side of the transmission other than just releasing that speedometer cable. This is the shift linkage. Uh, this is a 12 millimeter bolt that has to come out so you can drop this. And here, once you expose the pin from underneath this plastic, you have to hammer it up with a punch and uh, then you can remove the, the actual shift linkage itself. Uh, there's a bolt here. And then I believe there's a bolt, yeah, right here. Here's the front mount. You can kind of see how it's easy, might be easier to get it from underneath. It probably is the way to get it. And uh, once that's done, we can take the rear one off. And basically all we have left to do is support the actual engine. Let's get this 12 removed from the stabilizer bar. pop out nice and easy next we're going to slide this this cover off you're gonna to have to pull off this little horseshoe clip just be careful because it will shoot out on you but here it is you just spread it apart that should pop off you'll see the bottom of the pin that you need to pop up And the pin is out. They don't call this the bitch pin for nothing. You gotta put, you gotta put some power into that. A little bit of a pain, but you get it right. Make sure you don't have something that's gonna go into this, this hole, cause it'll only spread it open and that will not push it out. So I got both 14s out, nothing crazy, nothing too hard. I'm trying to focus on this. So I loosened it up. I actually found out that this mount, this front mount is no good. It should not have this much play. Um, so the mount bushing is actually broken, but it's not so much of a big deal. They're easy to change. So we're gonna order that and replace that. So that way there's no, uh, there's no noise or any clunking around when the engine moves or, or vibrates. We're moving on to the rear mount. Now the rear mount's simple. It's just those three, so I'm trying to get a good picture. There they are, three seventeens. And the back bolt is a 17 as well. We're just gonna loosen that, not take it fully out. And once that mount is loose, we're gonna support the engine and we're gonna break free all the bolts on the bottom and take them out. That way we don't have to worry about the jack being in our way when we support the engine. Once the engine is supported, we're gonna disconnect this mount from this little frame right here, which is the two 17s I showed you, one here, one on the bottom. Disconnect your top radiator hose, and we're gonna slowly lower the engine. I recommend loosening up this mount just so that there's no tension on the mounts themselves. Once we have the engine low enough, we're gonna break free the top tranny bolts and just pull this tranny off and get this clutch out. Now, the front, this small bolt, bolt goes in the front and the two longer ones are the two back ones. So just in case that there's a reason why, they, why they're different sizes. Now, beware when removing these, the thread is a little damaged on the bottom of this one. Luckily I have a replacement bolt, but the problem is it's the threads that are also damaged in the transmission. So I'm gonna vacuum out the holes Maybe uh, tap the tap in some new new thread, and hopefully there's no issues putting these back. So the last few things we're gonna have to take out underneath, so we don't have to get bothered again, is we're gonna have to take this plate off. So it's this bolt here, and on the other side, it's this bolt up here. So the rear one is a 12 instead of it being a 14. I don't know if that helps, but basically 
this little clip right there, if you pull it out with a pair of small needle nose or even a pick or a screwdriver, you'll be able to get that, that cable right out. Just to show you guys what it looks like, you just get a pair of needles on it and pull it right off. You're able to disconnect it without any problems. We're gonna break free some of these tranny bolts from underneath. That way the jack is not interfering with anything. So there's two bolts that particularly are easier from underneath. There's one right there. And then there's one on the underside, if you could see it, there it is. It's easy with a long wrench. Let's break it loose. This particular wrench has a ratcheting side, which is a lifesaver. Okay, so while I'm under here, I just want to show you that that bolt underneath the transmission mount. So I still have the other bolt in, and I'm going to take this one out, obviously, first. Then after this bolt is out, everything basically is out. The, the front mount, the rear mount, all the bottom brackets and transmission bolts are out. So basically, we're just going to take this bolt out, support the tranny on a jack with a piece of wood. We're going to disconnect the rest of the top tranny bolts, disconnect the top bolt mount, and we're going to lower this, this tranny out. You might not see this at first when you look over here because you'll have a piece of plastic, but you just have to remove the plastic clips and they might go under, one clip might go under here, but it's pretty simple. You just pop them up, pull them out, and that's it. Basically the same for all these types of plastic, but if you're, in case you're wondering why it might be covered, your plastic might still be in. I just had previously taken this out. I like to disconnect it from the engine itself. That way there's no tension on any, any of the other hooks. So right now I have the transmission supported. I use wood because I just don't want to damage anything and wood just makes it a little easier. It's a little softer than just using the jack. So that's, that's supported. We can now take off this last top tranny mount bolt and we're just going to loosen this this bolt here and that other mount bolt just a little bit so that the engine has play and then we're going to slowly lower the trans and just crack the rest of these top tranny bolts out and we will be on our way to success. You should not feel any tension when taking this bolt out if you have the tranny supported the correct way. I'm going to crack this mount bolt loose. Tranny is officially out, guys. You do have to take this mount out. I did pertaining because the radius rod that is on this side, it ended up touching right here. So in order to pull it away from the radius rod, this mount is on here and it was hitting the, the rear subframe that the rack and pinion connects to. So 
I unbolted it with these three 14s, took it off, and was able to drop the tranny out with no problem. So we're gonna pop this um, clutch release bearing out, and the way we do that is if you're gonna release here, you're gonna take this 12 or 14, I believe. It's a good time to change this. I would recommend it. It comes with the kit. The other bearing, the smaller one, the pilot bearing, is actually the bearing for the flywheel. Take this off, it's a 12. be able to basically pull this out we're going to catch this pin this release pin you'll be able to pull it out just like that pretty simple i do not have a replacement spring unfortunately but this one looks like it's in really good shape so I think we can get away with using it again, but usually you would want to change the spring, but in this case, I can tell it's not bent or anything like that. It's still in good condition, it feels firm, so we're gonna be able to reuse this, no problem. Pulling the spring tabs off from the sides and just sliding the new bearing in place, and that's pretty much it. Good to grease up this area where the input, where the uh, throw bearing goes because it'll expand the bearing's life and you won't have any issues down the line premature. So, so we're going to take the old clutch and the pressure plate out. You have to use a 12 point socket, it's a 10 millimeter. I'm going to zap this out with a gun, but when you're reinstalling the new clutch and, pre and a pressure plate, you have to torque it down to a certain spec and pattern. You cannot just use an impact gun. I do not recommend that. I'm doing this just to speed up the process. Just felt the chunk fell out. Flywheel looks more damage than anything. Looks like it's a little burnt up. Luckily I do have a new flywheel. I think uh, I think I actually am going to replace this because I don't like the way this looks. So it's the same thing for the flywheel. It is also a 12 point but this is a 17 and we are going to have to retorque this in a certain pattern. Just So just from being able to see the rear main seal, it looks like it's got a bit of a leak. So I'm gonna try to see if I have a replacement one around and I'm gonna change it. So I went, I did some searching and I had a brand new flywheel that I ordered with a different uh, D16A6 clutch kit for the SI a while ago. So um, don't be deceived just because it's rusty, it doesn't mean it's bad, but I don't like the way the surface is on the other side. It feels a little jagged, and that might explain kind of the, the vibrations on the clutch pedal and everything like that when I'm applying the gas. So usually after a while, you want to replace these just because they start to wear down uneven. This is a stock replacement for the D16A6 out of the SI. So I'm going to install that pilot bearing that came with the clutch kit. Just to point out, for those of you who don't know, the pilot bearing can only go in one way. And it, obviously there's a groove at the ends where it has to stop. So just an indicator on which way the pilot bearing has to be installed. You're gonna get a socket that basically fits on the outside of the bearing, not on the inside. You don't wanna damage, so make sure you get one that fits.
got the new pilot bearing installed to the new flywheel. We just have to make sure we clean this surface completely because any type of grease will just cause some slippage. So definitely don't want to have any grease spots. So just take some brake cleaner with a rag and just wipe it down. I can't stress enough, if you're going to install this pilot bearing, make sure you have a socket when you're going to hit it from the other side. Don't have it laying on the center. You have to have it on the outer ring if you're going to install it properly, because if you hit anywhere else, you're going to damage the bearing and it's going to it's going to blow out on you way before it's time. So, All right, guys. So since we found that the, the crank seal is leaking where the tranny is, we're going to replace it. The brand I'm using is Mail. That's the part number. Had a spare one laying around, so figured why not since we're here. Sometimes you run into these things. That's the rear crank seal behind the transfer uh, transmission. I used a long screwdriver. I very carefully nudged my way in and started to, to pry this way. So it's a little bit of a process, but you have to slowly work it out. Now we're gonna install the new one. All right guys, so Got the new one a little greased up on the on the side so it goes in smoothly. Make sure you clean this out, obviously, before you install the new one. Oh, okay. Okay. All right guys, got the new crank seal fully set. You wanna go even on the sides with a, with like a, a punch. Don't bang crazy hard, you don't need to. It's gonna set pretty easy. Uh, just make sure it's all cleaned up. Um, surface should be a little bit, a little grease, nothing crazy, just so that it's it can easily set, but just wanted to show you how it looks after it's all done. So I got the flywheel set. And we're gonna to torque this down to 87 foot-pounds. That's what's recommended in the manual and for the specs. I also wanted to point out that each of these bolts recommends a little bit of Loctite on them when you, when you torque them down, just so that they don't back out and you don't have any issues with them loosening or anything like that because it could cause some serious damage. So I've got my torque wrench set to 87 foot-pounds. Just like to show you briefly how I do this. So on the other side where the crank where the crankshaft pulley is, I have my breaker bar and 17 on the actual crank pulley bolt. If you try to torque these down without someone holding the side, it's just gonna spin on you because this there's gotta be some type of pressure against you. So now that I got that side held down, I'm ready to torque these down to 87 foot pounds. Just want to be want you to be mindful you have to torque these in a star pattern. You cannot just torque these in a circle. You must torque it opposite sides. So that way it torques down evenly and you don't have any issues. we got our new clutch so we're gonna we're gonna put the flat side against the flywheel and then we're gonna take our alignment tool just to hold it in place so we can get our pressure plate on you want to clean the surface of this pressure plate before you apply it pressure plate all clean it should look nice and shiny and then we're gonna line it up with these tabs that are sticking off the flywheel. All 
All right, once you have it in place, we're gonna put the bolts in. All right, guys, got the pressure plate set. Got all the bolts uh, finger tight. Got the torque wrench set to 19 foot pounds. So let's get this torque down in the same type of pattern. I also still have the breaker bar on the other side holding the crank pulley bolt. So that way the nothing spins as I'm torquing it down. Hey everyone, welcome back. So it is a few days later and I have completed the clutch job. My father-in-law has recently put about 500 miles on the break-in process. The car is ready to be daily driven. So we recently did that, finished that up. I didn't get a chance to finish it on film. I've been using my phone recently to film these videos, but it's been kind of hard because my phone dies a little quicker than the GoPro, unfortunately. But the clutch job is a little bit of a pain if you're doing it by yourself. Basically the process of putting it back is going in reverse order of taking it out. I would recommend when initially putting the tranny back onto the motor, having somebody go from underneath and kind of push up the tranny while someone goes from up top and aligns it with the dowel pins and gets it popped in. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Pop the axles in, work your way from the bottom, get everything done on the bottom, work your way on top, get your fluids ready. Only use Honda manual transmission fluid. So this car has been driving really well with the clutch now that it's broken in. It, there's no more shimmy in the clutch pedal. There's no more shaking or vibrating. Uh, when dealing with clutch release. Uh, we recently did a distributor. I had updated the brakes and replaced the front calipers. Just did an oil change. So this thing is running good. It's been daily driven for a while now, which is really nice, but everything else, the car really is really running nice. So I'm very happy with that. Just wanna show you a little shot of the interior. Gotta get over there and fix that climate control. Really want to get the AC running back in this car for next summer. So probably gonna work on that over the winter, but this pretty much completes the clutch job. So I just wanted to give you guys a little update on this car and where we stand. So thank you for tuning in, I appreciate it. And I will catch you guys on the next one. So take care, be safe and peace out.